Charles here, 2013 AP Macro FRQ number three. Let's see if we can get it done today. Inflation and expected inflation are important determinants of economic activity. So we're talking Phillips curve. Draw a correctly labeled graph of this short run Phillips curve. Easy. We're going to draw a downward sloping short run Phillips curve and label it SR. C for short run Phillips curve, inflation on the vertical, unemployment on the horizontal. All right, uh, easy, done. Number two, using the graph in part A, show the effect of an increase in the expected rate of inflation. So recognize that what we understand or should understand is that if we were to draw a long run Phillips curve in here, what we know is where long run and short run come together. That is your expected inflation rate right there. This is our natural rate of unemployment right there. So the only way to get an increase in your expected inflation rate, an increase of where these two meet, is to, now the long run Phillips curve will not shift, so that's not the place to go. We would think that the short run could shift to the right. Let's do this one, let's do this two. Let's show an arrow, right? Uh, and recognize that expected inflation has increased. Can we see that? That makes sense, doesn't it? Um, obviously, we can just then which, get rid of that and get rid of that. We don't need to have those. Just need to show that uh, rightward shift. That's not going anywhere, is it? Okay. Uh, don't worry about it. Then. All right. C, uh, what is the effect of the increase in the expected rate of inflation on the long run Phillips curve? Again, we don't even need the long run Phillips curve. If it had been there, it would not have changed at all. So there is no change or no effect, right? No effect on the long run. This is just a short run, short run effect. Given the increase in the expected rate of inflation from part B, will the nominal interest rate on new loans increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? Well, think about that for a second. In that bankers, and that's who we're talking about here, um, because nominal interest rates are set by bankers, right? So the understanding here is that if it, we expect the inflation rate to go up, wouldn't bankers want to raise their nominal interest rate, the rate they want to charge for a loan? You would think so. Let's talk about it for just a second because this is important here. Let's say we have a 3% nominal rate and they expect inflation to be 3% also. Now this wouldn't make much sense, but it helps for our understanding. If expected inflation is 3% and we charge 3% our nominal rate, we charge our nominal rate of 3%, then the actual amount of money we're gonna make on our loan or our real interest rate, what we actually make would be zero. We can see that, right? Nominal minus inflation equals real. This is a formula that we use all the time, and it helps us with a lot of questions, especially for the inflation in the GDP section. Nominal minus inflation equals real. This works with wages, this works with GDP, this works with interest rates. But in this situation, let's just talk about interest rates, right? Let's say instead here we charge 3%, but the actual inflation rate, or the expected inflation, let's say, went up to 5%. Now, if we only charge 3%, but expected inflation increased to 5 the real interest rate we would have made would have been a negative 2%. We can see that we have lost money. We charged 3 for our loan, but inflation, the price of everything, went up by 5%, or we expect it to. If it was actually 5%, we would have lost 2% on our money. 
So you can expect that just to break even, that bankers would, if they expect inflation to go up to 5%, they're at least going to raise their interest rates to 5%, or they would lose money. I hope that makes sense. Um, all right. Will the real interest rate on new loans increase, decrease, or remain the same? And this is helpful in that if you understand that bankers will raise their rate of interest as expected inflation increases, right? If they charge five and the new expected inflation rate is five, then they are going to make 0% on their real interest rate. Uh, so the real interest rate would not change. There'd be no change here because bankers are just going to keep track of inflation. I hope that makes sense. The nominal interest rate would increase, right? So again, as expected inflation increases, nominal rates are going to increase. But we could assume that there would be no change to the real interest rate. They're still going to need to make the same amount of profits or no profits in this situation. Um, that they did before, just to keep it the same place uh, they were. And this is where you could start thinking too hard. And so lots of you guys are going to think way too hard because that's the kind of people you are if you're taking AP economics. Yeah, you're thinking too hard about it. Um, recognize this situation uh, and what the college board's looking for, for an answer here. All right, E, assume that the nominal interest rate is 8%. Nominal is 8 Bars and lenders expect the rate of inflation to be three, three, right? And the growth rate of real GDP is 4%. This we don't need. Uh, this is just extra information, right? Nominal minus inflation equals real. Our real interest rate here is 5%. If they charge 8% for a loan and the price of inflation goes up by 3%, they will make 5% on their money. I hope that's clear and you can see that. All right, guys, I'm going to take off. Uh, be safe and, you know, leave me a comment if there's something I can help with. All right, be safe. Bye.